Hello and welcome to part two of Speranza Guesses the External Exam, the series where I guess the external exam so you don't waste your holidays and you do some study instead. I've just come in from gardening so we can get rid of this and let's do some maths. So we're jumping around the paper a little bit. This time we're going to be doing tech active questions. So go and find your calculator wherever it's hiding and try this question. Uh, you should pause the video now. This question should take you about 90 seconds to do. So pause the video. All right, I'm going to start solving this in three, two, one, and here we go. So we've got a probability density function, and we're trying to find the expected value. All right, so to find the expected value of this density function, the expected value is going to be equal to the integral between, now this one's between 1 and e, so e here and 1 there, and we need to be multiplying the function by x. That's the big deal when it comes to expected value. So it's going to be x times log base e x. That's just ln x. And we're writing that with respect to x. Now, luckily, we have a calculator, so we can just type that. In. All right, so we need this button here. We're going to be integrating. We're going to be integrating between 1 on the bottom. Just cycle through all this stuff. Oops, up, and e, e to the 1, so I'll just delete that little bit there. And then it's x times natural log, control this one, x. And we're doing that with respect to x. I've put a few too many brackets there, don't need all those. All right, there we go. And we get 2.097. I hope that's an answer. And it is, there's our answer, d. All right, let's on, move on to question 2. All right, um, you can read that question here. You can pause the video. It should take you 90 seconds. Calculator, calculator. All right, and I'm going to start solving it in three, two, one. Here we go. Let's solve it. It says normally distributed here, right? So I really encourage you to draw the normal distribution. It says we've got a mean of 252, and it says we've got a standard deviation of 12. You don't need to draw it in like that, but I find it useful. All right, it says the manufacturer says that 40% of bags weigh more than X. All right, so there is some value X that 40% weigh more than. So you need to be really careful here. We're looking at a value of X that's sitting somewhere here. I'm going to get rid of that standard deviation because it's sort of messing with me a bit. Okay. And that's going to be 0 0.4 there. All right, some people are going to be tempted to sort of put it on this side, say 0 0.4 there. That's incorrect. However, because we're trying to find this x value, we're doing an inverse normal distribution. And our TI calculator doesn't deal with this very well. So we're actually going to have to find this bit here, which is 0 0.6. All right, so let's get into our calculator. We're going menu, we're going probability distributions. It's an inverse normal. The area that we're looking for is 0 0.6, a mean of 252, and a standard deviation of 12. 255.04, I see an answer of 255, so I'll take it. D. The thing that I probably want to say here is that even though it's a multiple choice question and you don't get any marks for any kind of working. I really think if you're not drawing pictures for these normal distribution things, you're probably going to get them wrong. So spend the extra time, it's only 10 seconds, to draw a picture and get an idea of what you're dealing with. And we move on to tech active short response. Question one, we've got more probability density functions here. Um, it's worth three, five, seven marks. So it should take you maybe 10 and a half minutes to do it. So I really suggest you pause the video and you try to start working through this. I'll see you in 10 minutes. Pause it. All right, I'm going to start working on this in three, two, one, and let's start on part A. So we know it's a probability density function. So we know that the integral between two and zero for this function is going to be equal to 1. And that's really the secret source here when it comes to this. 1 equals between 0 and 2 ax squared x minus 2 with respect to x. Now, we're doing our calculator. Normally, I would tell you n-solve is a terrible idea. 
But this is a rare instance when nSolve is actually a fantastic idea and we should use it. So we're going to go menu, uh, algebra, numerical solve, 1 equals, and we're going the integral, the integral between 2 and 0 of a uh, times, it doesn't like it when you put x, a and x together, you need to put the multiply between the two. Uh, what was that equation again? a times x squared, uh, and then bracket x minus 2. We're going with respect to x, and we're trying to solve this for the variable a. Close up those brackets, pray, and we get an answer, negative 0.75. So I wrote down that I did a numerical solve on the graphics calculator, and a is equal to negative 0.75. Is it worth three marks? Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's worth two marks, but hey, we're not being too fussy about this at the moment. Don't forget, I'm on holidays. Speaking of fussy, there's probably some cognitive verb nerds out there that are looking at the word find, find, and find in this question, and thinking it shouldn't say find, find, find. We don't tend to use words like that in Queensland. We use determine determine so that's the cognitive verb in this question but again I'm on holidays cut me some slack all right so we're going to be finding the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1.2 all right so the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1.2 is equal to the integral between uh, 2 and 1.2 all right that's a terrible too and we know now that a is negative 0.75 negative 0.75 x squared bracket x minus 2 with respect to x and we should be able to type that directly into our calculator and get an answer. So you've seen me type this in a few times, you don't need to watch me type it in again. Between 2 and 1.2 here's my uh, PDF, my probability density function and my answer 0.5248. And the last part of our question we're going to be determining the median of the distribution. So how do we determine the median. The median is a value such that 50% of things are below and 50% of things are above. So we can say that 0 0.5 is equal to the integral. Now this equation is between 0 and 2. So I'm going to go between 0 and, well, let's use the letter B. I'm going to go between 0 and B. And I already know the rest of my equation, 0 0.75 x squared x minus 2 with respect to x and I need to know what that b value is. Now again I think my calculator is going to help me here. Now again I did this before so you don't need to watch me type in n solve again but I'm n solving 0 0.5 between 0 and b. Here's my equation. Don't forget comma b on the end because you've got to tell it what it's solving for and we get an answer of 1.22854. All right, and there's our answer. N solve on the graphics calculator. B is 1.22854. B represents the median, so the median is 1.22854. Uh, let's do the last one for today. All right, so it's a normal distribution kind of day. Tech active, short response question two. Um, normally distributed, blah, 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 blah. Okay, um, again, I'm not being picky with cognitive verbs here. Probably you would say something like determine the proportion of eggs or whatever, but we can read this question. We're good to go. It's worth seven marks, so it should take you about 10 minutes. Pause the video. Do it yourself, please. Don't let me do it for you. And pause the video. And I'm going to get started in three, two, one. Here we go. All right, so you know how I roll with this kind of question. I'm going to draw a picture. It's normally distributed, mean of 60, standard deviation of 5. I like to draw it in, but hey, I'll probably get rid of it later. Um, what proportion of eggs from the farm are jumbo? All right, eggs with a weight of more than 67 grams are jumbo. All right, so this value here, 67. So we want to know this area right here for our normal distribution. Now that we've drawn this picture, uh, the QCAA really likes that picture. It gives you a mark for that picture quite often. So now that we've drawn that picture, let's jump into our calculator and figure it out. So we're going menu, probability, distributions. Come on, calculator, do it.
normal CDF. Okay, and now we get to work. Now the lower bound is that 67, the upper bound we can make a very, 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 very large number, and then a mean of 60, a standard deviation of 5, I believe that was it, and we get an answer of 0 0.080757. All right, so I'm finishing this off by giving some indication of what I did on my calculator. You'll notice I type, wrote the word infinity there. On fancier calculators, you can write the word infinity. We can't on ours, but hey, that is what it is. Uh, and the probability is 0 0.080757. Now this next question, it's a real tricky question here because it feels easy to begin with. What proportion of jumbo eggs are less than 75 grams in weight? Now, a lot of people are going to see this question and draw the same normal distribution they did before, 60, and they're going to write in 75 over here, and they're going to want to know all of this. But that's not what's happening here. This is actually a conditional probability question. Uh, it's going to be easiest for us. Let's get rid of that part of our picture because it doesn't really make sense at the moment. It's going to be easiest for us if we write this down as a conditional probability before we get started. We want to know the probability that something has a weight of less than 75, less than 75, given it's a jumbo egg. And it's a jumbo egg, uh, it's greater than 67. All right, so how do we deal with conditional probability? We need a numerator and a denominator here. Now the numerator is going to be the intersection of these two things. Uh, so if x is less than 75 and x is greater than 67, the intersection of this is x being between those two values, uh, 67 and 75. And our denominator here, our denominator here is this second part the probability that x, that x is greater than 67. All right, now we already know the probability that x is greater than 67. We figured it out up there, 0, 7, 5, 7. What we need now is this numerator, the probability that uh, x is between 67 and 75. So back to our calculator, um, menu, probability, distributions, uh, normal CDF. All right, and we're going between 67 and 75 of our egg distribution, which is 60 and 5. And we get 0 0.079407. So I write that there. I do the division. I'll get uh, 0 0.9832. And that's it. And we've got one more part of this question. The heaviest 0.05% of eggs fetch a higher price. What is the minimum weight of these eggs? All right, so the probability uh, that the variable x is greater than some value, let's call it uh, q. Now we need to be a little bit careful here. The probability that x is greater than q is equal to, it's going to be, um, a lot of us are going to want to put 0 0.05 here, but it's got a little percent there. So it's not 0 0.05, it's 0 0.005. Five. If we convert that to a percent, move that decimal place to over, that's where we're at. So drawing it as a picture, we've got a normal distribution. We've got this tiny little area here that's 0 0.0005, and we want to know the value of Q there. It's a classic inverse normal style question. So we're going menu, um, probability, distributions, inverse normal, and we've got an area, a very, very small area, but actually, ooh, careful, because we're going to go back to our, our one note here. Because our calculator doesn't deal with this right tail here, we've actually got to find this stuff here, which is 1 minus the point zero 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 five. So back we go. And we can do this directly in here. We can go 1 minus 0 0.0005, uh, and we've got 60, and we've got 5. We can calculate that, and we get 76.4526. I've shown what I've done on my calculator. I've written this in. 
Probably too many decimals, let's be real. 76.45. What is the minimum weight of these eggs? Grams. 76.45 grams. Okay, uh, that is all of it for today. We knocked over two tech active multiple choices and two tech active short responses. Uh, we're a little bit of the way there. That's just the start. You should go away now. You should think about some of these questions, either from yesterday or today, that you had some trouble with. Go find some in your textbook. Practice, practice.